Hello, this is your friendly physical therapist. I am also the rehab manager for the inpatient rehab team and here to talk to you about what to expect as far as physical therapy. As you probably know, physical therapy is going to be a major part of your efforts to kind of get back to your normal self uh, following your surgery. And so just want to talk to you about what to expect. Really, our goal for physical therapy is to get you moving safely and quickly. And we really want to do that as early as possible because the faster we can kind of get you moving, the faster you start to heal and get you back to your normal self. So in the beginning, our initial goal is to help reduce swelling and to gain range of motion. And we're going to do things like elevation, ice, exercise to help you with that. And then long-term goal, we're going to work on strengthening and we're going to work on improving your balance. So when you arrive home, we really want you to take it easy, uh, especially that first week. We just want you to kind of limit your walking to around the house and to any appointments that you have to go to. We've been finding out from our home health colleagues in PT that sometimes patients uh, when they first get home, they're really gung-ho about their rehab and they can overdo it. And what happens is that, that causes more swelling and more pain and that can set you back you know, a few days or even a few weeks. So we really want you to take it easy when you first get home. Uh, we're, we would rather have you spend more time icing and elevating your leg. You don't have to get up every hour and walk. Um, just walk what you need to. If you need to go to the bathroom or if you need to get to the kitchen, then go ahead and walk and do that. Otherwise, your physical therapist at home, they will gradually increase your activity and they'll tell you how much you should be doing as you progress through your therapy. Uh, you'll, you will also be given some exercises. Um, you'll get some exercises today and you'll get some exercises while you're in the hospital. So make sure to do those at least three, three times a day. And then again, our focus is going to be on preventing swelling. And so you want to make sure that you ice and elevate. And again, true, true elevation involves lying on your back with your your leg higher than your heart and that can help to promote the fluid to to go from um, from your leg towards your heart and then again as I said slowly increase your activity what's common at home what can you expect to see when you first get home well as was already mentioned um, you can certainly can see some swelling and bruising and color changes are also common, and that can occur anywhere in the leg, from the hip down to the knee, even down into the foot, and can last for several weeks or even sometimes months. Um, also, not sleeping well for the first few months is, is common. As you can imagine, um, finding a comfortable position right after surgery can be difficult. And so that just might mean you, you, you know, you'll need to take uh, get up and stretch frequently and take naps. Um, but we don't want you to use sleep medications, um, mainly because the sleep medications can conflict with any narcotics that you're taking. These next three slides are your homework. These are your pre-surgery exercises, exercises that we would like to do, have you do before you go into surgery. These will help to work on your range of motion and strength. And as we always say, the stronger you are going into surgery, the stronger you'll be coming out of it. And I really believe that. And so it's going to help you optimize your recovery and get you back on back on your feet a lot quicker. So these exercises um, are designed to be really simple and really easy and hopefully won't cause any increase in pain. Uh, we designed them so that most everybody can do them. If you currently have an exercise program that you are working on right now, like let's say you're going to to the to do some walking on the treadmill or you're riding a bike, stationary bike, or you're walking in the water, then definitely keep doing that exercise up until surgery. You can add these three exercises onto your program. As I said, the stronger you are going into it, the stronger you'll be coming out of the surgery. So the first exercise that we have here are called your heel slides. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to have your legs flat and straight. And then with your um, surgical leg, you're going to just slowly slide your foot back towards your buttock, causing a bending in your knee and a bending in your hip. And what that does is it helps to improve range of motion in your knee and in your hip. It also works on your hip flexor strength muscles. 
So this is a very important exercise for when you want to try to get out of bed. You're going to need to be able to move your leg and lift it up so you can move your leg towards the side of the bed. The second exercise is called your quad thigh squeezes. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to strengthen the muscle that sits on top of your thigh above your kneecap. It's called the quadricep muscle. And what you're going to do is you're going to lie flat again with your legs straight and you're going to squeeze that muscle by pushing your knee down in towards the bed as indicated by the yellow arrow there. You're going to squeeze and you're going to hold that contraction for about 10 seconds. You're going to repeat it 15 times and you'll try to do it three times a day. And, th and that's true for all the exercises. So 15 repetitions, three times a day. And this exercise is going to be important to help strengthen the quadricep muscle, which is going to be important for standing and ambulation. The last exercise is called your gluteal squeezes or your butt squeezes. And what you're going to do here is you're going to squeeze your butt cheeks um, as firm as you can for about 10 seconds, again, repeating it 15 times, three times a day. You're just going to squeeze and hold. And so this exercise is important like the one before and like the other ones, they're going to help to strengthen the muscles that are needed to get you to be able to get out of bed, to be able to have you stand up and the muscles that you need to have you walk. These next three slides, we're going to talk about some adaptive equipment or devices that you can use to help you with your daily activities, such as bathroom activities, as well as dressing activities. And so, here in the first picture, you can see uh, different items, um, including a shower chair and some other things. Um, do want to let you know that you will be able to shower after surgery about four days after. So again, four days after surgery, you will be allowed to shower. Um, you do not have to cover the incision. Um, you can just use soap and water around the incision and then pat it dry. No lotions or no, or no creams. Again, just soap and water and pat it dry four days after surgery. And so when you do first take a shower, we actually want you to take the shower seated initially. We do not want you to take a shower standing initially because um, standing on a wet surface with a weak leg is really a recipe for a fall. And so just for your safety, um, take a shower seated first. And so we recommend various types of shower chairs, including the first one here at the top right hand corner is called a trans tub transfer bench. And it, this is for uh, those tub shower stalls that you might have at home. The nice thing about this is that the legs extend over the lip of the tub. And so what you can do is you can sit on the edge of the tub and then swing your legs in. And so you don't have to climb into the tub. In contrast, the picture below it is a shower chair that fits inside the tub. Um, and that's something that you could also use, but it would require you to be able to climb over into the tub first and then sit down. And then of course, um, there on the right, hi right hand lower corner is a um, some grab bars. Grab bars are great to have if you can install them. Now you don't need four in one corner, but maybe one or two would be s sufficient and provide a lot of safety for you. And then you have here on the left, left lower corner is a long handled shower nozzle uh, for when you're taking showers seated. And then when you're eventually able to stand up safely, you can get some type of anti-slip or anti-skid mat for showering. One piece of equipment that we often recommend the most is called this three-in-one commode. And some of you might be familiar with this particular uh, piece, of, piece of equipment. It's called a three-in-one commode because it actually has three purposes or three, way, three ways you can use it. The first way you can use it is that you can park it right next to your bed and use it as a bedside commode, uh, which means you know late, if it's late at night and maybe you're a little bit groggy or you're not quite as strong or it's dark and you shouldn't really be walking around on your own, um, you can simply just get up from your bed, transfer over to the commode, do your business, and then transfer back to bed and go back to sleep. Um, so that's one way. The second way you can use this device is that if you um, take the bucket out, you can park it on top of your toilet seat and use it as a raised toilet seat. The legs are adjustable, so you can raise it up higher if, if you're a taller person. It does have armrests, will make it, and that will make it easier for you to stand up. Most 
standard toilet seats in, in homes are pretty low. And so having some type of raised, to raised toilet seat will definitely make it easier for you to get up. Also, depending on the type of hip surgery you're having, if you're having a hip surgery, hip surgery with a posterior approach, you will not be allowed to sit on a low surface because that will cause too much bending in your hip. So you're definitely going to need some type of raised commode. Now, the third way you can use this raised, uh, this three in one commode is that if you put the back of the commode seat down, um, you can actually use it as a shower chair. And so you can put it in your shower stall as long as it fits and use it as a shower chair. So that's a great way um, to use it. I'll tell you uh, later on where you can find uh, the commode like this. Also pictured in, in this diagram, you see some dedicated toilet seats um, in the middle there and on the bottom though, those are just dedicated uh, for raised toilet seats. On this slide, we have some great devices that can be used for dressing and grooming. And uh, we call this our total joint kit. And as you can see in the top picture there, we have a long handled sponge, which of course can be used to reach uh, the areas that are like your, below your knee that you can't reach with a regular sponge or so you can help, help to uh, clean your lower leg and your feet. And then the next item there is a reacher. So that's a reacher that maybe you've seen before, but this is great to have. So if, let's say you're walking around and you see a hundred dollar bill on the ground and what are you going to do? You're going to walk by it or you're going to pick it up? Well, you're not going to be allowed to, or you're not going to be able to bend down and pick it up. So having the reacher handy, you can make yourself a hundred dollars richer. Uh, but it's great. To, it's a great device to have to be able to pick up things off the floor. Um, the next thing is a long handled shoehorn. Of course, um, to be able to put your shoes on, again, without having to reach down towards your feet. And then the last thing there, um, which is probably new to most of you, um, a great invention, it's called the sock aid. And this is a way you can put your sock on, again, without having to reach over your foot. And so what you do here is that you put the sock over that plastic piece, uh, and that creates an opening for where your foot will go in. And so by holding the ropes, you're going to throw the plastic piece down towards your feet, slip your foot in to the opening where the sock is, and then pull up on the ropes and magically your sock appears on your foot. So a great device um, to have to be able to help you with your dressing needs. Also pictured on the, in the left bottom corner there, um, you'll see two pictures of uh, long handled razors. So again, if you want to shave your legs, you, you can get that. And then we ha elastic shoelaces are great. Um, so it can turn your tie-on shoes into slip-on shoes by using elastic shoelaces. So here is where you can find some of the great adaptive devices and equipment that I just described. Medical supply stores are a great place to look to find a lot of these items. Um, typically they carry most of the stuff. Bay Medical Supply, you see the address is there, and Bowman Medical Supply, also a good place to look. Uh, Walgreens um, and our other pharmacies often will carry um, these items, including the commodes. Even Home Depot has uh, the three-in-one commode as well. Another great place to look um, sometimes are places like Goodwill or Nextdoor or even Craigslist, um, especially for the three-in-one commode, because there are a lot of people like yourselves who buy a commode, use it for two weeks, and then decide they never want to see it again. And so they donate it. And so if you're um, into, into recycling and, and things like that, you can check uh, those, those places to see if you can find a repurposed uh, commode. Bed Bath & Beyond is a great place to find the Total Joint Kit. Um, you can find the kit there. Usually they typically have it in stock. It, their, their prices are usually one of the better, um, better pricing. You do not have to buy all the all four item, items together. You can buy them separately. Also, everybody has those coupons that they're waiting to use. So I think Bed Bath & Beyond is a great place to check um, for that total, total joint kit. Um, and then of course, Amazon has everything. So you can, uh, when in doubt, check Amazon. You could find the commodes and the kits there as well.